Emulation has been increasing in popularity, and now with AMD releasing the new Ryzen APUs, it's become more affordable than ever. So, let's try and build a console-esque gaming computer that runs emulated games. Just as a disclaimer before I begin, this right here is not a build guide. This will not give you the best bang for your buck, so I don't expect you guys to follow it. This is just a fun build that I wanted to do on the channel. And I do wanna thank the sponsors of this build. We have Team Group who supplied us with the RAM, which I will get into later. We have Seasonic who supplied us with the power supply as well. So shout out to those guys. I will get into that a little bit later as I go through the components. So without any further ado, Let's begin with the parts. So first up, which is going to be the heart and soul of this computer, we have the Ryzen 5 2400G. The cool part about the APU is, it's kind of in its name, it has an integrated graphics chip, and the integrated graphics chip performs about uh, on par with the GT1030, which goes for about 100 now. It did release at a $70 MSRP, but because of the current state of the GPU market, it has increased to about 100 to 120 bucks. So for 175 ish dollars uh, after shipping and tax, you are getting yourself a GT1030 and a four core eight threaded CPU. So this is a perfect choice for something like this. As far as RAM is concerned, we have the Team Group Team Force Nighthawk uh, 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 memory clocked at 3000 megahertz. The RAM was supplied by Team Group, so shout out to them for doing that. Show them some love if you can. Uh, it's also RGB memory. Unfortunately, this case does not have any side windows or side panels, so the RGB won't really be used effectively, um, but it is nice to have, and in case uh, I want to use it for a different build, I totally can do that. Um, and with the current state of DDR4 memory, it was really nice of them to uh, send this out because paying 200 bucks uh, is kind of not in my budget right now. So thanks Team Group for that. As far as motherboards are concerned, we have the ASRock AB350 Mini ITX motherboard. Now, there aren't that many great mini ITX motherboards for the AM4 platform, and one could even argue that there aren't any great ones for the AM4 platform that can support paths like a Ryzen 5 with a light overclock. The good news is that I'm using the Ryzen 5 2400G and I plan on only running it at stock with maybe a slight bump to the integrated graphics chip. And that's because I want temperature to be of the utmost importance. I'm gonna be using a smaller enclosure than usual and I'm gonna be using the stock fan on this. So I don't wanna push it because I want temperatures to be um, as low as they can get. It's using the B350 chipset so I can overclock if I need to, and it includes AC Wi-Fi, which is great because I do not want to have to rely on uh, Ethernet simply because of portability reasons. Now it does have RGB support, I'm reading it here. Uh, similar to the RAM story, this case doesn't really have any windows or anything, so uh, the RGB is kind of ineffective again, but if I want to use this for something else or in a different build, I always have that option. The power supply we will use for this build is the Seasonic Focus Gold. It's a semi-modular 80 plus gold certified power supply with 550 watts. And again, shout out to Seasonic for sending this out. This is a fantastic power supply for this. It's way more than we need, but it also gives me the ability to upgrade without having to worry. Pretty much any single GPU setup will run just fine on this guy um, and with the rest of the components that we have here. So power is not gonna be an issue and it's semi-modular. So I have the uh, ability to wire and cable manage a lot better than if I did not have a modular power supply or at least one that's not semi-modular. So yeah, this power supply is gonna be perfect for this computer. The power supply is also smaller than your standard ATX power supply, which is great. So it will fit even better in a smaller enclosure like this case, which is an awesome segue to the last part of the build, the case. And I have the Cooler Master Elite 110. Honestly, I, I went to Micro Center and I picked up the uh, cheapest mini ITX small form factor case that I could find at the time. And this was basically it. It's old, but it still works perfectly fine, and it's a good case to start if you haven't done a lot of small form factor builds, and I've only done one before, so this is a good case for me. It's a good place to start. Those are the components that we have. Let's put the computer together, and let's uh, run this thing and start emulating games and seeing how well it runs. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Just 
viu rico namorar pobre? So here is the final build in all of its glory. I will say that while the Elite 110 case is fantastic, it has awesome airflow, and for its size it performs really well, I would have gone for something a little bit smaller. The case only slightly fits into my current entertainment sister in our living room, and I can see how its size could be a potential issue for smaller entertainment centers. Now I didn't overclock the CPU or the iGPU, but I did go into the BIOS and I turned off AMD's cool and quiet function to prevent any kind of downclocking. With the function on, the CPU wouldn't clock beyond 3.2 gigahertz, and the integrated graphics chip didn't even hit one gigahertz when I was in Dolphin or uh, the PS2 emulator. To prevent that from happening again, I clocked the CPU to 3.7 gigahertz and I left the iGPU at 1250 megahertz, which is its stock rated clock. And with all of that being said, let's get into some testing. So the emulators that I used were PCSX2 for the PS2 emulator, I used Dolphin 5.0 for the GameCube and the Wii emulator, and then I used CMU, um, I think 1.11.5 for the Wii U emulator. And I will put all of the settings on screen for your convenience, just so you can see exactly what settings I use for each of the programs. The first game that I tested out was Bully, an action adventure video game developed by Rockstar that was released in 2006 for the PS2. And this game played really, really well. And although the frame pacing wasn't the best, I did get a solid 60 FPS most of the time. Now it didn't feel like a 60 FPS game and I think that has something to do again with the frame pacing and just the way the game is developed, but it was very solid in terms of performance. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 was buttery smooth, and out of the two games that I tested on the PS2 emulator, this one was easily the best experience. Even in more crowded areas, I still had that constant 60 frames per second. It didn't have the frame pacing issues that Bully did, and it actually felt like the game was being played at 60 frames per second. The classic Super Smash Bros. Melee was the first GameCube game that I tested on Dolphin 5.0. Now it did hiccup ever so often in a match, but otherwise it was a solid 60 frames per second. It was very fun and very playable at its current settings. With more characters on screen and with higher weapon and item spawning, it did make it a little bit harder to run, but the game still managed to stay above 55 the majority of the time. The GameCube version of Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess did have a 30 frames per second cap, but it stayed at that 30 frames per second and only dipped when I was inside of houses, which did not happen very frequently. It was easily the most playable out of all of the GameCube games that I tested. Super Mario Sunshine averaged about 25 to 30 frames per second. It did dip below 30 a few times, but nothing that warranted unplayability. And it stayed closer to 30 FPS more than it dipped below it, so it was still a very fun experience. The first Wii game that I tested on Dolphin 5.0 was Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Now this had a frames per second average of about 55 to 60. It did hook up every once in a while, but performance was similar to Melee. It was very fun at the current settings again, and depending on the scenario it could dip down to below 50, but that was not very often. The last Nintendo Wii game that I tested was Xenoblade Chronicles, and it was easily the hardest game to run on Dolphin 5.0. It's usually around 30 frames per second, but in larger scale teamfights where there are big explosions and particles on screen, it could dip to as low as 0.5 FPS. It's playable, but with some compromises in those big fights. Otherwise, I had a solid 30 frames per second while roaming, and about 27 to 30 frames per second in the smaller scale battles. In CMU, the Wii U emulator, I tested two games, Mario Kart 8 and Legend of Zelda's Breath of the Wild. 
Mario Kart 8 averaged about 50 to 60 FPS and occasionally dipped below 45, but that only happened about once or twice a race or when the track first loaded up at the very beginning of the match. Other than that, it was a fun game to play and I did not feel disadvantaged at all, and even at the slower resolution, it looked fantastic. And the last game that I tested was the very popular The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it was barely playable. Not enjoyable though. I tried a variety of settings, but I stuck with 960 by 540 with low shadows and no AA, and I hovered around 23 FPS with moments dipping below 20, and occasionally the game hitting 30 frames per second in some instances. As APU drivers mature and CMU receives updates, I do expect that this will improve to maybe a consistent 25 to 30 FPS. FPS in due time, but at the current moment, it's not really recommended for playability. The temperatures inside of the Elite 110 case were warm, but definitely safe. I think I reached a peak of about 73 degrees Celsius, and that was when I was playing Breath of the Wild in CMU. But generally speaking, the uh, APU combination did not go above 70 degrees Celsius and usually stayed in the 60 to 65 degree range. And depending on the game, it would stay in the lower 50s to upper 40s. Now granted, these are at stock clock, so I probably have a little bit of headroom to push the CPU and the uh, Vega 11 chip, the uh, onboard graphics, a little bit further, but at that point, I don't really think I would see a lot of benefit from doing that. And like I mentioned earlier, temperatures were of the utmost priority, so I think I'll leave it where it is right now. I did play all of these games on a gamepad. It's very difficult and not fun if you play it on a keyboard and mouse combination with a few exceptions, but the one that I got is the Logitech F310, I believe, and I've had this controller for a very long time. I picked it up for about 12 bucks used on eBay, which is a really nice buy considering that most Microsoft uh, Xbox controllers or Sony PS3, PS4 controllers, they go for 50 to 60 bucks in retail. So good buy and that's basically what I used to kind of complete the entire system. Of course, there were games that I really wanted to try, like Skyward Sword on, on Wii slash Wii U, but I couldn't get the uh, whole emulated Wii Motion Plus to work correctly with my Logitech F310 controller, so I kind of just scrapped that, which is unfortunate because that's an awesome game to play, and it would be one that I feel a lot of people would play if they're going to be using Dolphin. Yeah guys, but that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys liked it, then uh, leave a like, and if you loved it, share and subscribe, and all of that stuff. I'm working on a lot of videos right now, which is why I haven't kind of been uploading. I tend to kind of upload in seasons, if that makes sense, where I, I mass produce like four or five, six videos and I just kind of upload and then I mass produce again and then the cycle just, anyway, I digress. But a lot of videos are coming and I think they would be very, very helpful to a lot of you budget builders, of course. So stay tuned for that. But I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.